get into that tonight. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Patrice Carter, and I am the CEO of Breakpoint Coaching Collective LLC in partnership with the love of my life. And also, I'm a digital course creation mentor of Done With You and Done For You services for women-owned coaches, speakers, authors, and CEOs who are ready to package their expertise into digital courses. So if you're joining me tonight or you're joining me in the replay, please be sure to let me know where are you joining from? Where do you live? Where do you hang out? Are you a speaker? Are you a coach? Are you an author? Are you an executive? Do you have a course? Are you thinking about planning a course um, or doing a course? But tonight, um, we're going to get right into it because tonight I want us to actually do some hands-on work together where we can teach you, I can teach you, and we can talk about how to transform your book into an impactful online course. So tonight is all about taking your book. It doesn't matter if it's a memoir, if it is a um, journal, if it's a workbook, if it's a work of creative nonfiction, it doesn't matter. If you have a book, you have a course, okay? So I want you to know that. I want you to, to agree with me on that because agreement is very important, all right, in this space. So that said, you're gonna need three things, um, maybe four, because I have one that just came up for me when I said that out loud, but you're gonna need three things. The first is you're gonna need your book. So I have my book. My book is called Superb Woman from Bad Girl to God's Girl. And I'm gonna tell you how I turned this book into a course. So you're gonna need your book, all right? You're also going to need a pen and paper because I'm gonna be giving out some um, juicy information, some tidbits, and some things that you need to know. And then also you are going to need um, a pen and paper. If I didn't say that, so pen and paper, your book. And you're going to need to ask lots of questions. One of the things I think that we fail to do is ask questions. Like maybe sometimes we don't want to bother people or we feel like we're being a bother and we just don't get the information that we need. So for me, I'm an open book. I love sharing. Um, I love sharing my expertise and I'm a door opener. So I'm someone who opens doors for other people and other women. So that said, if you're someone who um, has questions of me, please ask. If it's something I feel is off limits, I will let you know. Um, I will say to you, this is, um, you know, what's the proprietary, um, but I'll give you some information or resource and maybe send you um, again in the right direction. That said, I want you to be um, intentional tonight to really sit with me and do this work. OK, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a blueprint for your course. OK, we're going to create a blueprint for your course. Um, now, we have one hour together because I'm only here from seven to eight and we have quite a bit of ground to cover. So we're not going to get too far down in the weeds but I'm going to give you enough that should help you be able to get started. Okay. So that said, <laughs> you're going to have to take it from here. And if at any point you get lost, I have shared my contact information, um, my link to schedule a chat with me in the comments. So you can always schedule um, a 15 minute chat and we can go from there. Okay. So let's kick it off by doing a step-by-step -step guide on how to seamlessly transform your book your memoir or your journal into a structured and engaging online course. So the first thing you need to do, again, is grab your book. If you're here with me, what I would love for you to do is share with me the name of your book, the target market, target audience for you, but like, who is your book for? What is it about? Just general information, okay? The name of your book, who is it for? What's it about? So that's going to help me to kind of feed you ideas and pour into you as we're walking here together. So let me know that because I would love to help just get you jump started. All right. So I'm going to use my book as a guide and as a teaching point for um, the work that we're doing tonight and to inform our work. All right. So again, let's kick this off. So we got our supplies. You need a pen, a paper, and your book. And the first thing that we're going to do is talk about um, who your book is for. Okay. I think it's very important that we know who, well, what your book is. So let's do that first. I'm sorry. So is your book a memoir? I'm going to type that in the comments. So what is your book about? Is it a memoir? Is it a journal? Is it an autobiography? 
that type of thing. So my book, again, is called Superb Woman from Bad Girl to God's Girl. And it is a workbook, a journey, and a devotional to take women from where they are to where they are called to be framed around the Proverbs 31 scripture. I use a large part of my testimony to guide the conversation, but it's very much about the reader of the book. It's not about me, but I share testimonial pieces to help them to be brave enough to tell their story and to write their truth. Okay. So that is my book is about transformation. So what is your book about? My book is about transformation. It's about a journey of transformation. Okay. That said, who is my book for? My book is for women ages 18 to 80 <laughs> that are walking with the Lord, but they're ratchet. Okay. So somewhere they got off course, they're living one way out in public and they're living another way behind the scenes and they're tired. They're exhausted. They may be like me, um, adulterous, suicidal, like I was, I should say, adulterous, suicidal, um, just exhausted from how they're living and just wanting more and knowing that God has called them to live more. So again, my book is Transformation. That's what I promise is transformation. So it's for women ages 18 to 80 who want transformation. They're faith-based, who are in Christ and desire transformation um, in a nutshell. So who is your book for? Because who your book is for is who your course is for. All right. So what is your book about? Because that's what your, that's what your course is going to be about. So my course is going to be about transformation. It's going to be for women ages 18 to 80 who um, desire transformation and change. They're in Christ. OK, so you have to first identify uh, what is your book about? Who is it for? Um, hey, Shawanda, thanks for being here. And hey, Latifah, when you come. <laughs> All right. So once you've identified what your book is about, who it's for, recognizing that that is your course. OK, so your book is about this. So my book is about transformation. So my course is going to be about transformation. So I hope that makes sense. So my course is called Eight Weeks to Superb Journey to Excellence. OK, and it is a transformational journey. All right. So the course is eight weeks. All right. So that said, the course, and I'm going to tell you how I got to eight weeks in a minute, but I know that this is a transformational course. So the next thing you need to decide is, do you want your course to be self-paced and self-guided for your client? Does your client, is your client the one that's going to be able to handle being on the journey on their own? I knew that women taking this particular course were not going to complete the course on their own. How do I know? Because I had women that would read the book and they would buy the book and then I would run into them somewhere in public or at another conference and they would say to me, I didn't finish. Because what happens is this book is about doing deep work, deep personal work. And sometimes the work is so deep that they get stuck in that place and they don't have anyone to help them out. So I recognized that this needed to be, um, it could be self-guided, but we also needed to meet on a consistent basis to help them through the over the humps and through the deep places. So you need to determine if this is a book that can, um, if this is a course that um, people can take on their own or if they're going to need some coaching. All right. So you have to decide that. So to decide if this is going to be a self-paced course or, um, or self-paced with meetings of some sort. And also you need to decide if it's going to be meetings with you or meetings in community. All right. When I say meetings in community, I mean like a Facebook group, Zoom, that type of thing with more than one person. OK, Shawanda, great. So shedding tears. So tell me about shedding tears. And Carolyn, I see you. I'll come right back. So Shawanda, your book is called Shedding Tears. What genre is that? So is that nonfiction? Is that self-help? Um, who did you write it for? And are you developing it into a course? So give me some feedback. Hey, um, Carolyn, Coach Carolyn. So the name of your book is God. Why did you save me? It's a snapshot of your life. And it's for women ages 18 and up who experience trauma and the target audience is specifically Christian women. Nice. Okay, so keep that, keep that in mind. We're going to come back. That's good. Love it. Okay, so Shamanda, let me hear some details from you. Who is your book for? What genre is it? 
um, excuse me, as that type of thing. Okay. So target market, what's it about? And what promise are you going to make from this book? So what do you want them to, to experience from this course and from this book? So what I want them to experience is a renewed relationship with Christ and for them to be healed. And if they're not completely healed, for them to have started the process of healing. So I'm looking for healing and restoration. That's my promise. All right. So you want to think about this is going to help you build your course messaging, right? Because this is going to be the thing that people, when they leave your course, they're going to leave with transformation. My course, they're leaving with transformation. They're leaving with healing and they're leaving with restoration to Christ. Okay. They're going to get that by taking a self-paced journey and they're going to get that by coming into community or they're going to get that by coming into coaching. All right. So you said I wanted to be self-paced with sessions as a group. Okay. So write that down. That's good. Okay. That's good stuff. Shawanda says broken women in my life. And I have a course called becoming whole. Okay. So becoming whole is a course that extends from shedding tears. Is that correct? And are you already teaching the course? Have you already drafted the course? Let me know. All right. So now getting further into um, planning this, because we're still on part one, which is coming up with our blueprint. Yes. OK, perfect. So tell me what you need from me, Shawanda, then, you know, what questions do you have for me? Anybody, any of you can ask me questions. That's fine. All right. And thank you for being here tonight. So um, I did, but I put it down. Um, you put the course down is what I think you're saying. <laughs> All right, so this is a clear blueprint. So we're doing the blueprint. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our table of contents. And if you don't have a table of contents, then that's fine. What you need to think about is what I'm getting ready to say. And that is what sections of the book are going to be in your course. All right, what sections of the book are going to make up your course? And this is important that you don't just pick any sections, right? Because you want the sections or the chapters that are going to have the greatest impact. So when I looked at my book, my book is 13 chapters total. All right. So, but I didn't want to do a 13 week course. Not that I couldn't have, I just didn't. So what I did was I had a mentor at the time. Um, shout out to her. Um, her name is Angela January. Shout out to Angela January. Love her. And Tell me what you mean when you say you need help launching Shawanda. And um, so that said, she said, you know what? When she met me, um, she said, you know, this is a coaching tool, right? A coaching program. And I was like, shut up. Because, again, if you have a book, you have a course. If you have a book, you have a coaching program. If you have a book, you have a keynote. If you have a book, you have a podcast. If you have a book, you have more than one income stream. OK, so I really want you guys to get in this mind, mind frame mindset with me. So she said, you know, this is a course. And I was like, shut up. OK, so she said, yes. Yeah. So just like that, she opened it. She said, we're going to take eight chapters out of your book and we're going to create a coaching program. All right. And I'm going to mentor you. And that's what she said. And she did. All right. So I went through here. We went through together. We picked out the eight most impactful sections. And that was the eight weeks course. So I decided, hey, I looked at each of the sections and I thought, what is going to give my client the biggest bang for their book? What is going to give them the biggest transformation? What is it I'm going to you know, be able to help them through? Some things are going to take longer than others. So I need to think about like, how is this going to work? And that's what I did. So let's do that together. All right. So um. You meant relaunching. Okay, so let's talk. So let's schedule um, a chat, a discovery session. Shawanda, my um, schedule, um, my link to schedule a chat is in the, if we haven't already scheduled something, but if we haven't, um, it's in the comments and I'm happy to reshare it so we can sit down and kind of talk through what that looks like. Okay, so Carolyn says, um, your promise is start the journey of healing, transformation and restoration, but also bring women to Christ. Okay, great. And it has seven chapters. So um, Carolyn, what part made you say Jesus? <laughs> Let me know. Um, and Shawanda, here is the link to schedule. So 
So you want to pick the free um, discovery session. You can just pick the general discovery session because um, there are several options. Okay. And um, but it's here in the bottom. Okay. I just shared it with you. So that said, you want to go through your book and you want to pick out those most impactful chapters. Okay. So once you pick out the impactful chapters, then you want to begin to structure the course. So the way that you begin to structure the course, and so now we have a frame, right? So we have a frame, and now what you want to do is begin to fill in the frame. So week one um, would be whatever that chapter is that you pick that first chapter. So my first chapter of my book, just to kind of give you an example, walk you guys through this, is um, talking to them about, it's called Let the Journey Begin. At the time that I wrote this book, which it published in 2010, I was in the United States Army Reserves. That said, in the United States Army Reserves, anytime we go or we'll go into a field problem, meaning out into the woods, <laughs> camping, uh, our military camping trip, they would give us a packing list. And in that packing list or on that packing list was everything that you needed to bring for the amount of time that you were going to be there. Three pairs of socks, three pairs of underwear, three pairs of pajamas, military pajamas, three sets of BDUs, two sets of boots, two pairs of socks, whatever it was. And you packed only what was on that packing list. If you decided that you wanted to overpack, which I'm <laughs> guilty, if you wanted to overpack, that was on you. You could do that, but you were going to have to be able to carry it and you're going to have to be able to keep up. So the, the per point of that chapter in this book is for people, the women that get this book, to start thinking about what am I carrying that's weighing me down, that's slowing me down, or could cause me to be captured behind enemy lines. Because if you get slowed down, then you're going to get caught by the enemy and you end up as a prisoner of war. All right. So this, again, is about transformation. So in the first chapter, I'm having them think about what is it that's causing them to be distracted, assessing where they currently are, how did they get here, and they have to do work. So there's a workbook. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. All right. So that's impactful. All right. So thinking through that. Okay. So let's see. Carolyn says that the one book could be transformed to all that. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to tell you. Keith, stay with me. I'm going to show you how God did it. Shawanda, this is good. To him be all glory. Amen. All right. So that's our blueprint. Any questions there? And if you watch this on the replay, just put hashtag replay and just ask me questions. And um, one of my fellow coaches, um, Shatea, she was like, oh, please do this again. So I'm going to do this again because this is just my jam. Like I love, I just love this type of conversation. Like this is awesome for me <laughs> to be able to share this with you guys. Okay. So the next thing is strategic course cracking skills. So here is this is about acquiring the essential skills needed to strategically design and organize your course content for maximum impact. OK, so the way that you're going to design it for maximum impact is, again, going through each of the chapters, each of the sections of your book, thinking about your target market, your audience, the people who really need your book. What is your promise? What do you want them to leave with? What chapters or what information out of your book is going to help them? to get that, to achieve that and being strategic about how you organize it for the maximum amount of impact and engagement, because you don't want to just build a course that people don't engage with. Okay. So how do you know they're going to engage with it? You can start teasing some of the um, chapters in your social media and seeing what the responses are like to it. You can post it as a question. So for example, my first chapter says, let the journey begin. I could go live or I could share with um, everyone about the first chapter is called um, check your map. You know, where are you right now at this point in your life? That's the question I could ask. So when you think about tears, um, I think it was Shawanda said your book is called just going back shedding tears. What question could you ask that would bring engagement that would help you kind of get some insight into how your uh, course might do? So that's called social proofing. Um, Carolyn, what could you put out? What types of questions could you ask that would help um, the people that you've been called to, to to kind of engage with healing, transformation, restoration, uh, salvation? 
So thinking about that. So when you start to sort of engage with your audience, even as you're crafting your course, you're engaging with the people that you want to bring into the course. It's called social proofing. When you do that type of thing, when you put something out and then you see what comes back, you see what type of response you get. Or you can poll your warm audience and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this type of course. I'm thinking about um, using my book. And these are the chapters. What do you guys think? Then social proofing is proof that it has social impact. It's proof that it's going to be socially desired, socially accepted. So that's the way to kind of prove your concept, proof of concept. Um, what are some of the neat things you need to shed from? So when you say shed from, then I would say be more specific. That's just me. That's just my opinion. Because when you say shed, unless you're trying to promote thought. So like um, provoke thought. Because I'm thinking shed from what? Like shed from from what? You know, um, am I thinking about shedding from emotions? I think about shedding from people. So if you want it to be um, ask it like that. That's great because that's going to promote provoke thought. Um, but if you want it to be more specific, um, if you want them to be deeper, then ask it in a more detailed, specific way so that you get a specific response, if that makes sense. Okay, so then the next thing is content enhancement. So I did a video some weeks ago on how to create a course that um, people engage with and that they actually complete because you don't want to create a course that people don't get to the end of. So you want to don't you want to make it so long or so intense. But that said, Coach Carolyn is on here with me, and she's one of the women in my certified Christian Life Coach training program. That is a credential course. That's a certification program. So it's going to be more laborious. It's going to be more. Um, it's going to take some time, but what we're creating here, we're crafting tonight. I'm just talking about this. Um, I want women to kind of get in, get the depth of it and then get out and go on with their life and be better. All right. So that said, when we're talking about content enhancement techniques, we want to learn the art of leveraging our existing written material. So how many have a book that you wrote this book? I don't know how many years ago. Even if you have a CD, because I'm thinking about my friend who has, a, she's a gospel artist and she has a bomb CD. She has an English version and a Hispanic version, a Latin version. I think that she could do a course. That's just me because she's a worshiper. She could teach people how to take their worship and develop it into a CD. Everybody can't do that. Um, or how she took her songs that were in English and crafted them into, um, into Hispanic um, verbiage to be sung. So that said, coming back here, you want to think about how you're going to take your existing written material to create dynamic and compelling course content that resonates. So one of the things that I thought about here, um, course or content enhancement is making it be hands-on. So hands-on, again, I was sharing in my book that in every chapter, they have to answer questions. They have to dig deep within themselves. So like one of the questions here is what has be caused you to become distracted? Who has caused you to become distracted? Um, have you seen me? They have to put a picture of themselves here that represents who they thought they were going to be, who they wanted to be, who they hoped they would be. And they're going to do it again at the end, put a picture of them, tra their transformed selves at the end. But that said, what can you do to make your book, um, the content or the learning dynamic and enhanced? What can you do that's hands on? So give me some ideas that you guys have. OK, so Shalanda says I'm going to have to schedule a call because I'm not I cannot text fast. <laughs> do it. That's so sweet. Absolutely. And I'm not a hard sell. Like we're going to sit and we're going to have a good time and just see what God does and um, happen to answer any questions. So be sure to schedule that. But how can you make your book hands on? So for those of you that are here with me, Shawanda, Carolyn, anybody else that's watching um, that hasn't responded yet, do you have a book? If so, what is your book about? And what can you do to make it um, dynamic and compelling and um, engaging? And so one of the things I said is to make it hands on, give it, make it where they have to do something. All right. The other way that you can make your content um, be enhanced, dynamic or compelling is to have community and team activities. So what that looks like is in the Christian Life Coach Certification um, course that I have, 
there's a section when they get to around week nine that they actually have to do something with one of their classmates. They have to do peer coaching. They have to coach a fellow peer. So when you do that type of thing, then it requires that they have to connect with one another. And that's going to create engagement. That's going to foster engagement. That's going to foster a sense of camaraderie. Also, if you're like me, it's going to foster a sense of competition because I don't want to be the weak link. I'm not getting left behind. I'm finishing. We're all finishing. We're getting to the finish line. So that's going to make me want to work harder. Also, team activities. If this is a group course, then you can give them a group project or something that they have to do as a group. Another idea, some other ideas are tests and quizzes to test their knowledge, to test their skill, um, to see if they're grasping the information or if they're really um, resonating with what they're reading and what they're doing as they're walking through the course and comments. So depending on which type of platform you decide to host your course on, making sure that you have the comments feature toggled on and saying, hey, this week, read chapter one, um, check your map, comment below and let me know where did you find yourself? That type of thing. So that requires in the comment, which creates engagement. And then I also say respond to one other uh, person that's on the journey because they can see each other's comments. All right. And I was trying to see if we have any questions or anything. Okay, cool. All right. So then the next thing is, do you guys have questions? And if you do, you can just ask me throughout and I'll be happy to pull over and respond. Is this making sense? Are you guys following? And is this helpful? So those are a lot of questions. Just answer <laughs> whichever one comes up for you. Okay. So then marketability insights, because again, we're talking about tonight, if you have a core, a book, you have a course. All right. So marketability insights, discover key strategies that will make your course stand out in the crowded online education space and increase its market appeal. Hi, Brittany. I love you. Um, so one of the ways that you can make your course stand out, hello, is you have a book. I just think that sometimes we just take things really for granted. Like we take ourselves for granted. So I have a course, I have a book for this. And let me show you guys one other thing. I have written a whole entire textbook. All right. So I have a textbook for my course, for my um, Grow Your Wealth with Digital Course Creation. I wrote a textbook. And so that means that not only guys, we're published authors, we're experts. Okay. We're experts in that place that we have found ourselves authoring, if that makes sense. So for you, <laughs> so for you, Shawanda, um, shedding tears, you're an expert at shedding tears. Coach Carolyn, you're an expert in the things that you shared um, as it relates to God. Why did you make this way, um, make me this way? You're an expert in coming out. All right. So all that said, hey, Angela, that's okay. You don't have a book yet, but you have a book in here. So just be thinking about that. So for Angela and people like you who might be thinking, um, Shawanda, yes, inner healing and deliverance. So for Angela, you're thinking, saying, I don't have a book, but this is a pro tip. So as you're developing your course and you're making your notes and you're developing and creating resources for the people that are going to take your course, you take all that, you turn it into a PDF, and that is an ebook. If you take all of your notes you put it into a specific format, you create it into a PDF, you have a mini ebook that you can sell along with your course. Does that make sense? So you may not have a book now, but you do have a book. Angela, you especially have a book thinking about what I know you want to make your course on. You are a book. <laughs> okay. So yes, that can be done. Okay. So that's too easy. It's just a matter of thinking like, hmm, I don't have a book, but I, I do have a book with all the knowledge that you possess, that all of you possess. So here talking again about how strategies that will make you stand out is one in a creature market appeal is going live. My sister, um, Pastor Garlinda Price, soon to be Dr. Garlinda Price, she calls it hitting the lift button. So many people don't go live. And I, I thought about this as I was preparing for tonight. My husband was like, who are you talking to? And I said, I was talking to myself because I was going over my notes and just what we would talk about. And but as I was thinking about it, how many um, I've met people that are like 
trillion time best-selling authors via Amazon. So they're Amazon best-selling authors. They're this type of best-selling author. And but no one knows unless they know that person and they only, you know, so they don't know widely. And what I mean by widely is unless I happen to go on Amazon or I stumble across that person's page, I would never know anything about them unless they start to go live and they start to make noise. So if they go out and so Brittany to that for people that are terrified to go live right now i'm streaming on a platform and i'll come back to my thought i'm streaming on a platform called Streamyard, and i highly recommend it there's another one i think jamila evans i don't know if she's on here tonight called restream i believe and so there's a free version of Streamyard, and there's a paid version depending on how many platforms you want to stream at one time so i paid for the next i paid for the first version because um like the net first the next higher version because I wanted to stream on three platforms at the same time. But that said, you can, Brittany, you can pre-record. You can pre-record your streams. So you don't have to go live. You can just record them and then release them. So it's really just about you recording um, and being seen, if that makes sense. Or because I know you're big on Instagram, you do a lot of reels. So I think if you just do some voiceovers, um, but I think people need to see you. I was going to say voiceovers, but people need to get to know you. So you can, again, pre-record and that would be ideal because you can always go live too, where you don't necessarily have to be in the face of the camera because you're refurbishing furniture and zhuzhing and like making like this amazing um, curated furniture. You can let the furniture be the um, the star of the show if that makes sense, and the process and the technique, you can be teaching it and have the camera angled on the thing that you're working on. It doesn't have to be on you, if that makes sense. So yeah, that part. <laughs> and I haven't forgotten I owe you notes from our call because I still would love for us to work together. Just thought I'd put that out there. Okay, so going live. I think it's very important that you go live. Go live with your book. Go live and talk about your book. So the guy, there's a, I think his name is... Um, the guy that plays Luke Picard on Star Trek, I can't remember his his real name is Patrick something. Um, and what he does is he loves reading poetry. So during COVID, he would go on live every day and he would read one soliloquy or one poem every day um, for a year. And I thought that was just so beautiful because he enjoyed poetry and he wanted to share it with others. And I think he was there with some isolation going on. So think about what you can share. So again, for those of you that do have a book um, or have a product or service or expertise, hello, Angela, then writing out um, just some maybe like four um, talking four weeks of like, hey, this week I'm going to talk about this. This week I'm going to talk about this and this and so on. And every time you create those talking points for your live from your book or your expertise, you're building your course because those are going to go and become the teaching points in your course. So you see how it all starts to work together. All right. So go live. So what that looks like for those of us that have a book, have expertise or um, like Brittany, have a service where she's building something is I can take one section of my book. Let the journey begin still with that first section. And I can um, go live and explain to them why it's important they pull over and really think about where they are, why they need to check their map at this point in their life and what checking their map at this point in their life would do for them. And hey, while we're together, let's do some journal prompts. So while we're together, let's talk about what has caused you to become distracted. Give me some comments. Let's get into it. Um, what do you want to do to remove the distractions? Let's get into it. Do you want God to put you back together? Yes or no? And then we have a prayer. We pray together and then we wrap up. So Brittany, what that could look like for you is maybe you could go on and um, show some type of technique. How do you do sanding? How do you take something down to the studs so that it can be prepared to be built on or be um, refurbished or be made better? Um, Angela, thinking about financial basics. What are the five things that people need to know? And hey, when you join me, letting people know that you're going to go live, um, you want to get my book or you want to download my free um, 
sheet or page or what have you so you can be working with me or Brittany if you're doing it with your um, building then these are the things you need to have so that when we go live we can be doing it together um, inner healing uh, with Shawanda so Shawanda think about there's a sheet that they need inner healing and deliverance what's one thing they want to work on what are three things they want to work on and let's do that together live how do we do that so it's really just about connecting in that way so Carolyn says, oh, so Brittany said, I know I think about it daily. I'm sending that. Um, so I'm sending your notes Thursday at the latest. And then we can talk again. It is, you know, again, I'm not a hard sell. So we can just kind of talk through um, just some ideas that have come up. Let's just chat. OK, um, Carolyn says, I'm getting my toes wet with reels because I do one minute daily devotionals. I also do monthly black mental health forum sessions. So what comes up for me there, Carolyn, that's awesome that you're out there. Are you doing call to actions? Are you doing a call to action, asking people to do business with you, hire me, schedule me, bring me in to speak, um, buy my book, that type of thing? And so that's important because, again, we're trying to monetize. We're not doing this for nothing. We're in business to make money. And so we're in business to make money and we're in business to make impact. So all those things, that's a Romans 8 and 28 um, mentality, all things work together. Okay. We're impacting and making business, growing wealth, all these things at the same time. All right. Moving on marketability, discovering key strategies to make your course stand out in the crowded online education space and increase market appeal, getting noticed. How do you get noticed? You get noticed because when we talked about going live, we also can have other people share about us. So one of the things that's really, um, I think great is when other people speak highly of us. So what customers, clients, et cetera, can you have share testimonials, video testimonials, written testimonials that you can share on your website, um, that type of thing? Uh, what types of awards have you won um, that you can share, that you can talk about? Oftentimes, I think sometimes we play it small and we don't want to be seen as though we're bragging. But it's not about bragging, it's about shining. And that's one of the favorite, my favorite chapters in my book is called Shine, Girl, Shine. And it talks about um, not being like a shrinking violet. But there's a scripture in the word of God that says that nobody takes a, a light and puts it and hides it. No one, um, they, they take it and they put it out so that it can light the house. So the whole point is to illuminate everywhere that we go by sharing the key things that we have learned from, grown from, our experts in so that other people can have the benefit of that, okay? Still talking about your book. If you have a book, you have a course. If you have expertise, you have a course. If you have a product or an ability or a skill, you have a course. All right, so next is networking and vending. You've got to get out there. you got to start networking. You can network online. There are so many groups here um, on social media, on the internet, in town, et cetera. And if you don't know of any um, events or things that are going, what I started doing was stalking other people's pages or I had friends who would say, I'm going to such and such event. I would literally message them and say, can I go? <laughs> I had one friend, Dr. Michelle, and I would say to Dr. Michelle, um, you know, she was going to an event. I said, I want to come. Can I be your roommate? So I invite myself. I don't. I am shameless because I don't know of any events, and so I'm just getting back into networking. So I always hi, Coach Jalen. So I always try to find out where are events. And Coach Jalen, guys, please check out Coach Jalen Inevitable Wealth, Black, Pretty, and Paid University. She is phenomenal. She is a six-figure um, coach. She has been instrumental in helping me to grow and become this person that's sitting before you today. So like she is huge part, a huge part of my journey. Um, if you're with someone that really wants to um, grow in your mindset, grow your six figures, but just get your whole life together, your whole business life, please reach out to um, Coach Jalen Jones. So that's it. Hi, Crystal. Crystal McLean, God bless you. So Crystal, what are the emojis? I see different faces and he's like, Tell me what that's about. Okay. <laughs> and Coach Carolyn, you said, no, I haven't. I'm thinking that you have not done a call to action. Is that what you were saying? Okay. So getting back to networking and vending. So when I first wrote the book, so for those of you that have books, even if you don't, even if you're just someone who has like Angela, huge expertise, Brittany, um, highly creative, are you guys networking? So when I first wrote this book, one thing I felt the Lord told me to do again was to vend. So I just got on Eventbrite. 
And I started looking for all types of events where there were um, women where my women were. So that's why you need to know your target market. So I was looking for my target market. And if I found an event that had my target market, I looked at the vending fee. I paid the vending fee. Um, sometimes we're too cheap. OK, so we got to stop being cheap. And that's not even about being cheap. It's really about having an abundance mindset and investing in the thing that you want to be successful in. So that said, the reason I bring that up is sometimes people don't want to pay the vending fee. But I recently paid $50 to go to a networking event. Shout out to Stevie Mills, Aisha Stevie Mills, um, Dr. Stevie, um, who hosted the It Factor. I invited myself because I found out Dr. Anissa Short, um, my dream client, was going. I wanted to be in the room. I registered. I paid $50. I met my first, um, not my first, but one of many done with you clients. So I ended up making $5,000 by investing $50. OK, so you want to think bigger than I'm paying a vending fee. The whole point of the vending fee is to get into the room to get in front of your people. So that not only can you share your book, but you also meet potential people that want your course. You're meeting potential clients that need your coaching services, that need your mentoring. There's an opportunity for you to meet the host and possibly become a speaker. So that said, you got to start networking and vending and getting out there. All right. As a vendor, what I did to grow my course is every time I set up as a vendor, I had a sheet of paper. But now you can do that on your laptop or your iPad. You can be a little bit more <laughs> 21st century at the time. I didn't have an iPad or anything like that. So I used what I had. I had an email list. So I would collect people's emails. So they would come to my table. And I would ask them for their name, their email address, their phone number, and I would have check boxes. Would you like more information to, on coaching with me? They say yes or no. Would you like um, more information on my eight-week transformation course? Yes or no. Would you be interested in bringing me to a speaking engagement? Yes or no. So then I would come back to my home office and I would follow up on everyone. Everyone I would send a thank you email to. Um, for engaging with me. And those who said they wanted something specific, I will follow up and I will work to get them into a call. All right. So making sure that you have some way to capture email lists and email information while you're out. All right. So the next thing I started doing, again, if you have a book, you have a course, um, but also I started speaking. So I started looking for opportunities to speak or at least be on the panel or a platform at, a, at an event where I was vending because what I recognized was people bought more books and engaged with me more if they could hear me speak. Because once they engage with you, once they find out who you are, what you're about, they see your depth and they see your knowledge and expertise, they're more likely to buy a book. And then they really resonate with your story. And now they want to look into the services that you offer. All right. So we're still talking about marketability insights. Anybody have any questions or comments? All right. So then the other thing is, if you have a book, you have a course because having a book sets you up as an expert. It makes you an expert. I have a textbook for my course, Grow Your Wealth with Digital Course Creation. I have a published book. This book I published 2010, like I said, from Superb Woman, from Bad Girl to God's Girl. So I'm an expert. I'm an expert in what not to do. <laughs> I'm an expert in the fact that God can take a bad girl and turn her into a God's girl. I am also a PhD. So I have um, 14 plus years in university and settings called academia. And so that said, writing a text, curriculum development textbooks, but now I'm an expert in digital courses. I would say an expert. I'm still working on it, but I have over 10,000 hours of working in a digital course space. All right. So then moving on, writing articles. Okay. So if you have a book, you have a course, but you also have blog posts and articles. And you should and could be taking sections of your book and having, um, you can do two things. You can write articles for LinkedIn. You can write blog posts. You can be a guest blogger on other people's sites. So like, for instance, going back to Carolyn and going back to what well, just everybody, Shawanda, Angela, you could take your knowledge, Crystal, um, especially Jalen, <laughs> Brittany, Thinking about something that you want to share, some insight that you want to share and putting that in a blog post, either on your website or on a guest blogger website who is 
um, reflects, whose audience reflects your target market and being a guest blogger and letting them be a guest blogger on your website. So someone who has a complimentary business to yours, so you're not competing, but you're sharing and complimenting one another. So being a guest blogger and also writing articles. So when I think about writing articles, I think about LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, what I've started doing is um, not every week, but whenever I do this type of live stream, I will take this information and I will turn it into an article. And then I post that article on LinkedIn. So now that creates, um, that positions me as an expert to begin to think about or talk about digital course creation. So when someone is thinking about creating a course or they want someone to create their course for them or build it for them, I want to be top of mind. So how do I do that? You have to get noticed. How do you get noticed? You speak, you network, you then you blog, you position yourself as an expert. All right, the other two things I'm gonna move on is also getting on the radio or starting a podcast, being a podcast guest on someone else's podcast. So sometimes I think, I know we overthink things. And so there is a podcast that is, um, so I'm thinking about my podcast, it's on anchor.fm. So anchor.fm is owned by Spotify. So if you were to set up an anchor.fm account, which is, and you record your podcast, which is just an audio, it's essentially an audio file, that audio file, that podcast, you put a description, just like you see my notes here, you put some, you put your description and your links, call to action, and you record yourself discussing your, from your air expertise. And so I know that podcasts are polished and some people are really funny about that, but i am of the mindset that done is better than um, incomplete. <laughs> okay, so I'd rather get it done and perfect it on the run. But some people can't get past that spirit of perfection. So they over they overanalyze, but I feel like you should get it done and then you can keep perfecting it. But that said, if you begin to establish yourself as an expert through podcasting, then you're going to have a wider impact. Your voice is going to go further because why now we're in the airwaves. So everyone listens to Spotify, but also asking to be a host, um, either a guest host or a guest on someone else's podcast or radio station, internet radio is still huge. All right. So let's talk about monetization strategy. So Shawanda says, I allow fear to stop me. Okay. Well, we're not doing that anymore. Okay. So I just want to encourage you to do it afraid, do it afraid. So I just want to, let me give you some biblical background on that. So when the children of Israel got ready to go into the promised land, I'm, I don't know if you're a person of faith, but just go with me on this story. The children of Israel get ready to go into the promised land. They're tired. They didn't walk 40 years to try to get to Canaan, to get to the border of Canaan. And they get there and the enemy is in their, the enemy stand there in their land. He got the nerve to be with their dirty feet. Okay. His dirty footprints all up in their stuff, all up in their promise. Okay. So the very enemies were the giants of Anak were there. So what did they do? So of course they sent two spies to spy out the land. I think it was Joshua and Caleb spied out the land and they were like, we could take these guys. But the other people, some of the other children of Israel, they were like, their hearts were overcome with fear. And they were like, we're like grasshoppers. We can't do it. They saw themselves as small in light of the height of the giant. But Joshua and Caleb were like, nah, dog, we got this. We can, this is the place. X marks the spot. And so that said, the people that doubted, that stood there at the border, shrinking back in fear, seeing themselves as small, didn't get to go in. But the ones who did, they had to circumcise their heart, meaning they had to get their heart straight. They're not going to be afraid anymore. So the scripture is Psalm 139. Search me, O Lord, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Meaning, search me, God. See that I'm anxious. I'm afraid. Lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the truth that you have not given me a spirit of fear. And even if I'm feeling afraid, I'm going to go anyway. All right. So we're not doing that. Um, but it's going to, but fear is going to rise up every time there's, I don't know that that's something that's ever going to go away, but what I can say is it's a spirit of fear that rises up and it's not necessarily always rising up from inside. Sometimes it rises up from in front because the enemy's trying to intimidate us to not get the thing that we deserve. And that's why those giants were there. They were there to intimidate, but they still, that land belonged to them. So we're going to keep going. We're going to keep trying and we're going to keep walking. 
So let's see, Carolyn says, yes, I've written several blog posts on LinkedIn. I've also spoken on several non-paid podcasts. Okay, awesome. I'm planning a podcast in 2024 called SS Wholeness Podcast. Excellent. So Coach Carolyn, one of the things, this is just an aside, and I'm going to get back to my topic for tonight, is consider um, having sponsors for your podcast and putting out, so just like radio stations, they have sponsors, sponsorships. So think about monetizing your podcast by inviting sponsors and you can write a sponsorship deck and then that's how you can monetize your podcast so think about that all right so back to if you have a book you have a course so here monetization strategies so there are different avenues that you can explore to turn your book into a lucrative asset so this is a money maker okay this is a money maker so how is this a money maker so your book your book is how, how much is y'all's are y'all's book so anybody here that's an author how much is your book my book is eight to nine and I'm just going to say $20. The book is $20. But now I took the book and I wrote a course. So the course is called Eight Weeks to Superb. Okay, Journey to Excellence. So the course is, I'm going to make up, I don't know how exactly how much I don't remember. Let's say it's $1,000. So now the book has turned itself into a course. I've turned it into a course. The course is $1,000 plus the book. So that's $1,020, Okay. So then, okay, cool, $20. So then now when people buy your book, they start taking your course, depending on the, um, what I'm looking for, the topic, they're going to need coaching, okay? It, maybe it doesn't even depend on the topic because if it's a how-to book, I may need coaching if I'm just not getting the concept or I just really want to flesh this out more. So with my book, what I was finding was because of the level of depth, and the level of work, deep work that people had to do to get these types of transformations that this book brings, they needed coaching because I would meet women who would say, I bought your book, and but I didn't finish it. And I was hearing that constantly. I bought the book, but I didn't finish it. And it was because some of the things they had to walk through, to heal through, they were getting stuck. Um, so I recognized that they needed coaching. So along with the book, along with the course, there's coaching. All right. So now you see how the monetization is going. You went from $20 to $1,000. Now you're at $20, $1,000, and you're at coaching. Let's say a coaching session is $300. Now you're at $1,300, $1,500 course. And by the way, depending on what course platform you choose, I'm just going to say teachable because that's who I'm with and that's who I love. Although I've built courses, I've built courses on Thinkific, Podia, Kajabi, and Teachable. So, but if you have a book, a course, and coaching on Teachable, you can bundle that. So you can do a bundle for $5,000, $2,000, $3,000. They're going to get the book. They're going to get the course. And oh, by the way, for the whole eight weeks, they're going to get eight weeks of coaching. So do you see how if you have a book, you have a course? Mm, Shawanda, I keep hearing I bought your book, but it was drawing me and I put it down. That's it. Hey, Brittany, how's it going, sis? God bless you. Brittany, you have a course. Think about it. Mm, we have so much to teach. But Shawanda, yes. So they need coaching. Shawanda, are you a coach? Do you offer coaching? If you have a book, you have a course and you have coaching. <laughs> okay. So then, and anybody has coaching. So Brittany, McNeil, Angela, you guys have coaching. Crystal, you definitely got coaching. Um, Carolyn, we already know you're coaching. And if I'm missing anybody, it's because I just don't see you. All right. So then moving on, the other thing that your book is going to do, we're talking about monetization strategies from your book is speaking. So when people, um, I would go to vending events, I would approach the host either in advance or after. And I would say, hey, if you have any other future events, please consider me for um, speaking. I'll be happy to share my bio, that type of thing. Closed mouths do not get fed. And I would just say, if it's if there's symmetry, I wasn't a hard sell. And so I've been invited as a result of my book to be a keynote um, at an entrepreneurial conference at Campbell University where I was teaching um, to be on panels and I've hosted my own events, but I've also spoken at events and conferences, but also my book has been used to create women's conferences and small women's groups um, Bible studies. So they would buy the they would buy the book for the women, the conference attendees, 
And then the women at the church, the women's ministry would buy boxes of books to do as a small group study. And then I've had women take the courses. So this is how your book becomes a monetization stream. All right. So you have to have a strategy. Just think about it. This is I'm laying the strategy out for you. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about is interactive learning tools. So with your book and your course, you want to think about how you can uncover um, ways to incorporate interactive elements into your course and enhancing the learning. And that is going to set you apart. It's not just going to be someone reading, responding, answering a few questions. You want to have some sense of dynamic um, interaction and gamification is new in the area of coaching and gamification is new. And I would say trending in the area of courses. So when you think about gamification, um, think about um, polls, like they have to do a poll. Um, maybe they have to interact. Think about those boring trainings we used to have to do at, at the job where you had to do like the, what do you call it? The HR training. And you had to watch these videos and interact with the video and click yes or no, that type of thing. So anything that's automated within that um, platform that you can make um, that's gamified, that's tactile, they have to do something to interact, is going to create a reinforcement of learning. It's going to create engagement and it's going to create memorability. All right. So then moving on, platform guidance. Hi, Sakithia, Coach Sakithia, good to see you. Um, so in terms of platform guidance, so here, this is talking about platforms in the sense of where you want to take your book, turn it into a course, and how's your course. So I have my courses housed on Teachable. So there's Teachable, Kajabi, Podia, Thinkific, Unimi. There's so many. But what I'm going to do is I've talked about the different platforms before, but not in a specific live. So I'm going to do a live stream coming up on the different platforms and the pros and cons um, based on my experience and my interaction with each. All right. So we'll talk more about that another time. But next, um, I want to talk about, again, if you have a book, you have a course, one thing, um, something else that you need to think about is effective communication. So how are you going to effectively communicate everything that's in this book into a course in a way that your client can digest it, respond to it, and grow from it, and you can keep your promise? At the beginning, we talked about the course promise, transformation, inner healing, et cetera. So the one I think most one of the most important things you can do is to learn your client's uh, learning style is to ask your client, your student, the readers of your book, what is your learning style? What is your preferred learning style? And then you craft your course to meet that learning style. For my courses, I try to engage all four learning styles. So the learning styles are um, audio, meaning that something people learn by hearing, visual people learn by looking, by watching a video, that type of thing. Some learn by doing, I think that's called um, kinesthetic. And then some people learn by experiential learning, meaning they have some type of experience that reinforces the learning. So try to gear your course towards the learning style of your target audience. So for example, I don't think um, Jamila's on tonight, but one of my um, dream clients, Jamila Evans, um, she did a course. Um, she's a beauty brand boss who recently did a course for beauty brand bosses, um, cosmetologists, um, beauty professionals, and she knows they don't want to do a bunch of reading. So she knows that that's going to cause them to lose interest. So she needed to do video and audio with light, um, hands-on types of things. So I think that was very wise that she knew this is the culture of my uh, community and I need to make sure I set my course up and develop my book in such a way that they're going to engage and learn from it and invest in it. All right. So the other thing is um, having confidence in your ability to deliver your course. So you want to present your material in such a way that it captivates your audience and ensures a positive learning experience. And so as you guys are developing your course, the way that you can um, be confident in how you're delivering your course is to make sure that your course is organized, that it's not all over the place, that you've sat and you've thought about the course experience from the standpoint of a learner and that it flows in that way. So for example, the way that I have my course set up is um, orientation, start here. So everybody that comes to the course, once they register for the course, it says start here. <laughs> 
So they open up the start here folder and it's boom, boom, boom. Then I say next, go here. So um, you want to always give them instruction. So week one, okay, now you finish week one, go to week two. You finish week two, go to week three. So you want to lay it out on paper first and have it laid out in such a way that it makes sense. And again, social proofing, asking your target market or your warm audience to engage with it and give you feedback. All right, next is aesthetics. You want to make sure that it's pleasing to the eye, that it's um, that it's pretty, that it's not boring, it's not text heavy or too graphic, um, but that it makes sense. When I say graphic, like too many graphics, too many pictures. So I don't know if anybody has seen the latest, um, what is it, Spider-Man, it's Spider-Verse. It was beautiful, but it was overwhelming. I couldn't, I fell asleep. I was dizzy. It was just, it was too much going on. The colors were all over the place. Too much. <laughs> okay. Um, also, the way that you build confidence in your course delivery is to have some um, aspect, again, of live um, connection. So even though my courses are self-paced, they still get me live. So I go live with them on the first and third Monday of every month. Um, they can schedule a meeting with me if they need to in this course. Uh, if they find that they're getting lost and it's outside of the time that we're meeting, they can meet with me. Um, but there isn't, I do that a la carte. So I try to keep them in the course. So if they're doing that too much, they're going to have to pay to meet with me, which is like 175 an hour, something like that. You can build it however you want, but you want to be able to set it in such a way that you keep them engaged, but also you're not creating dependency. All right. So then moving on, um, the last thing I just want to touch on here, and then we're wrapping up right at the end. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm not just going to hang up, but what questions do you guys have? What comments? What can I answer? Um, what do you need from me? So ask me those questions. You can be typing those in while I share this. So the last thing tonight, again, if you have a book, you have a course, is community building. Community building is very important. Hey, Amanda, um, understanding the importance of community engagement and learning how to foster a supportive learning environment around your course is going to ensure that people start the course, they engage with the course, and that they finish the course strong. All right. So I have a video. I've sh I'm going to share it with you. Um, I did it some time ago. I did a live stream on how to, um, this is for hashtag course creators, how to keep clients engaged and finishing. So I'm going to share the link to that, how you can create a course that keeps clients engaged and finishing. Because one thing that I don't want is for someone to pay me for a course that they don't finish. Hey, Pastor Carol, good to see you. Um, Amanda, thank you so much for the compliment. So this is um, a how-to video that I recently created, how to keep client, clients engaged with your course. Okay, any questions for me? You guys have any questions? So tonight, um, just to recap, we talked about a lot of things, but specifically the main thing was for those of you that are authors, if you have a book, you have a course. But I also because I know I have some necessarily like non-authors on here right now, but who have incredible amounts of expertise, people like Brittany, um, Brittany McNeil, um, Brittany Robinson, um, Angela, um, you guys might not have a book, um, but you guys have massive expertise and creativity. So you have a course. Sakithia, you have a new book, you have a course. Um, yes, author in the making. Thank you for uh, saying that, Brittany. Um, so Brittany, please schedule me because I want us to have our follow-up talk, but I'm going to send your notes this week. And um, so guys, for those of you that just came on late, please let me know if you have any questions. Catch the replay and ask questions and I'm happy to respond. So what I want to share with you all is that if you are ready to take that leap and turn your book into a course, or you're ready to um, turn your course that you've been thinking about into an actual thing, into actuality, um, please know that I have a done with you service and a done for you service. I would love to work with you and to serve you in that way. And the way that we do that is we first have a discovery session to determine if we have symmetry and if I can assist you in doing that and building that. So I invite you to a discovery call with me. Also, 
Um, I would love to work with you. If you would love to work with me, do you want to work with me? Check yes or yes, and we'll do that. And then also I have another um, paid webinar that is coming up and I want to invite you. Registration is now open um, for that webinar and it is taking place on Thursday, February 29th, 2024 at 7 p.m. And so I have pinned that registration link in my Facebook. It's also on my YouTube and LinkedIn. And I'm going to post it here, um, which this is the link to my website. And on this link to my website, you can sign up for my newsletter. You can sign up for the webinar and you can also schedule a discovery session with me. So I have put that in the comments. Um, you, um, how are you? Wait, let me see. I saw you. Um, yes and yes. I love it. I love listening to you. I will definitely check out the replay. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> All right, guys. So any other questions before we hang up? So again, tonight we talked about this. If you have a book, if you have any level of expertise, you have a course. And um, this is something I feel like I want to share this. And then we truly will wrap up. Is there is space for you. OK, there is space for you. Um, you just have to show up and take your space like no one is in your chair. No one is can no one can do what you do. All right. So when I say that, what I mean by that is no one can do what you do is the level of expertise that you possess is yours alone. And when I was looking um, at statistics a couple of weeks ago, uh, just to prepare for a live stream that I was doing, I found out that the e-learning market is poised to grow by 2027, I believe, up to 320 billion, that people watch YouTube more than they watch television. And people go to YouTube and Google to do what? To learn how to. So Brittany, this is for you. Crystal, this is for you. This is for all of us that we have some knowledge that we can show someone how to do something by um, live streaming or going streaming on YouTube. Um, just getting out there, just sharing what we're doing. If you just be consistent, there's something called a compound effect. So compounding means compounding interest. The more you do something, the greater impact, the more it's going to grow. So I just want to strongly encourage you that there's space for you. It's not too late. It's never too late, but you just need to start. And if you're afraid, just keep going. Just do it anyway. If you don't know what to do, just do the next best thing. And um, I can highly attest to that. It will work. OK, so let's see. Carolyn said, I forgot that also I have a private Facebook group. Amen. I think I will change the name of it for the course. Guys, as for the business. Also, I want your business. I want you to hire me to be your digital course mentor. If you are a coach, speaker, author, executive, and you're ready to package your expertise into a course, I want to do it with you or do it for you. And it is an investment, but I'm worth it. And more importantly, you're worth it. So that's my call to action to you guys. So I will see you again, God willing, next Tuesday. And please reach out to me. Thank you so much, Amanda. So good to see you. God bless you. Hearts and hearts to you too. So love you guys, mean it, and I'll see you soon, okay? Take care.